right, hello. I'm not gonna wear it <laughs> all the time. Uh, how's the React gone going? Okay. So, give me a give me a second. I actually need my glasses. Yeah, now I can see you, although not in all those uh, those bright lights. So. Yeah, let's let's go. Uh, how many of you tried the Apple Vision Pro yet? Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of hands. You can still try it at the Colstax booth. Uh, it's a kind of a unique experience. Uh, you have to try it. Um, and uh, what I'm uh, while I'm speaking about Apple Vision Pro is because a year ago Apple announced this new device, uh, and the new era of what they call spatial computing. And uh, I gotta say, I got quite excited by, by this device, although because I'm not from the US, I'm from Poland, Europe, uh, it's not, not available there, so it was quite a hassle to, to get one. Uh, I, I was like, very excited about it, and uh, I immediate, immediately thought uh, on, hey, I would like to spatial compute with React. Wouldn't that be amazing? Uh, so I think React is very well positioned to, uh, to run on this new thing, because uh, it's a, uh, what, if you tried React and React Native, you probably feel that it's, it's, it's like a universal language for building apps. Uh, and uh, it's not only available for over 10 platforms, it's also used by 4 million developers. And uh, I think like around one-tenth of them probably know React Native and is able to ship something not only for the web, but also for mobile, for desktop, for TV, and for VR devices. So. Once you learn to think in React, uh, and you also learn React Native, it tricks with you a bit, because uh, if you shipped for n platforms, why wouldn't you be able to ship for n plus one? Uh, however, will it prove to be productive on this, on this new thing? Because spatial apps are quite different. We don't have the mouse, keyboard, or uh, touch devices. We have hand gestures and some advanced eye tracking. We don't sit in front of a screen. We're sitting like, immersed in multiple screens at the same time. And what's, what's even more interesting is that those screens can bleed some extra content before, after them, and all the space around there immerse in the space uh, that, that you're seeing. So let's see how Apple is thinking about developing um, apps for, for this new device. Uh, Apple tells developers that this is the Swift UI, you know it, already, you could ship your apps for iOS, for iPad, and any other Apple platform uh, for, for years now. And this is what you, what you work with for this new device. And, and this is, you can see this is like a declarative language. You can, you see some definitions for stack, for 3D model, for text. This looks kind of like React to me already. Uh, and frankly, we didn't need uh, Apple to tell us that uh, declarative programming is a way to go for rendering 3D in 2D or 3D environments. Projects like React Free Fiber, and shout out to the, to the maintainer here. <laughs> <clears throat> Show us for years that React is capable of doing that with custom renderers, uh, just rendering mostly for, for web, but it's also available uh, for, for mobile with Expo GL. So let's go back to the uh, Vision OS, which is the operating system powering Apple Vision Pro. There are two ways of running apps there, the native way and the compatibility mode. So uh, as you can see, uh, on the right we have the, uh, I mean, on 
you're right, yeah. Uh, we have the app displayed in compatibility mode, and it feels slightly off. Like, it doesn't have the translucent background. It resizes uh, together with the text, uh, not, uh, not, not together with the layout. And, uh, and the error messages, like or for, for alerts, feel flat and uh, just off on that platform. They, they don't provide this extra depth as a native one. And not to mention, you can't interact with the new goodies like the immersive spaces experience. So what you can do is that you can fork React Native because this is this this project that gets you, uh, that gets React to any other platform. So this is exactly what we did. And uh, yeah, React Native for iOS is written in Objective-C. Uh, you don't need to understand that. Uh, in fact, we can actually comment out that code and the errors that were happening are going away. So uh, yeah, software development sometimes is easy, isn't it? Uh, but but if, you, if you know Objective-C, if you know C language, uh, please don't get mad at me. We added um, if devs, which is like a proper commenting, if branching technique for, for the C languages to you know, make it right. And uh, after some fiddling with that, we got something on our screens. We rendered a native app with React Native, and we got a runtime error, which is expected to do. We wanted to see that beautiful red screen co-designed or designed by Ricky, if I, if I remember that, or redesigned later to, to, to look how it's uh, um, it looks slightly better than this one. So, uh, so is it, like once, now that we have it, uh, now, now that we have this app rendered for this new platform, uh, we can actually uh, verify if, uh, if we're able to create the user experience and the actual developer experience that's suitable for writing apps in a productive way. Uh, so firstly, we would like to focus on hand tracking and um, hand gestures and eye tracking. Uh, and uh, because React Native just uses the platform. Uh, we got that mostly for free, especially around hand tracking um, and, and, and the gestures there. And for eye tracking, we needed to add extra API um, or implement a specific Apple's API for the, for the view element. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, we've seen some, some great work on the web compatibility from the React XPlat slash convergence team and also, we've seen similar efforts from macOS uh, team at Microsoft, uh, which uh, um, th those, those two teams wanted to uh, find a better way to abstract the, uh, the pointer uh, devices, pointer events. So we went with web specification. So today, you can just use cursor pointer that you know from the web, and it just works. You can look at the icons here, and they uh, they are highlighting, this is the hover effect. And what's more, uh, this is now compatible with, uh, this enabled this experience, not only for Vision OS, but also for iPad and, uh, and for Mac OS. Another thing that uh, we needed to, to, to tackle is uh, multi-window support, because those uh, Vision OS space, um, spatial apps usually work li like, they work really nicely when we have multiple windows surrounding us. So they don't have to be separate apps. It can be the same app. Uh, however, it's, it, it's not the same as uh, just opening another tab in your browser, because in this case, we are sharing the JavaScript thread. Uh, it's just we are running second window in another React root, so they don't clash with each other. And to do that, we needed to adjust some internals in React Native uh, that, uh, that were using the screen, and some uh, they, they were just assuming that we only have like one on screen, so we adjusted that and we introduced the Window Manager API, which we actually co-developed and uh, designed with the native script team, uh, which at the time was also working on adding Vision OS support to, to their framework. Uh, and this work uh, is designed to be this API 
is designed to be compatible with Windows, with Mac OS, with iPad OS, uh, and, uh, and probably some other, other platforms out there. Uh, and the last thing that we wanted to, to tackle is the immersive content experience or, or exp uh, experiences uh, and, and environment, as Apple calls them. So let me bring some water. So I wanted to do this demo on this headset uh, so you could see yourself with uh, you know, all the screens surrounding me and you. However, uh, mirroring on, the, um, on this internet sucks. So, uh, so I went with the, uh, with the actual simulator. And I will say that Apple made amazing job with the simulator because we developed all those things without having access to the device. So let's start with an uh, iOS app uh, that, that we designed here. So uh, this is a regular app with a list. You can, um, you can open another uh, screen in a stack. It uses React Navigation. So it's a, it's a native navigation experience. And that's about it. However, for, uh, for Vision OS, this is, this is different. Uh, it's, it's the same code base. Um, but adjust it for, for the new platform so you don't see like white or black background. We have the uh, translucent background. We have the same, we have the, um, yeah, the same list. We can hover over it, and it lags a bit uh, right now. But you can see I'm hovering um, with the mouse. Normally, it's simulating me looking at this thing. It feels really... Uh, nice when you when you have this headset, you gotta try it yourself, and you can you can click on um, on this on this thingy, and uh, yeah, this is a live demo, and it doesn't want me to click, so maybe yeah, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's. For my Mac, it's probably too much to, to handle screen mirroring and showing the, showing the demo. Uh, however, um, uh, what I wanted to, to show you in this, uh, in this example, uh, I, I have some, some fallback, no worries, uh, is that you can, you, can adjust, you can adjust your code live as you, as you go and, uh, and play with the um, Edit it as any other React Native app having or React app having access to fast refresh. You can adjust the um, the mirroring. Uh, the now you can you can adjust the hover experience. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's maybe let's maybe go for for how it looks like in the real environment. So this is the hotel that you can probably see. This is the same app, just rendered for the production environment. And what we see here is that we're opening a uh, element. Uh, we're opening in a new window. It's, it's loading the 3D element. And what's cool with that is, um, is we're, we're rotating this, uh, this 3D element. It's, it's all powered by JavaScript with React Native Gesture Handler and React Native Reanimated. Uh, so it's, it's fully 3D, uh, fully JavaScript controlled. And what we entered here is the, is the immersive space that's uh, rendered with Swift. This is, uh, this is designed in the Spatial Composer, um, which is an app from, from Apple. And uh, I'm going to show this. Show this to you, actually. So you can see, this is, uh, I'm entering Xcode, and this is, the, this is the space. So it's almost the same as you've seen. Uh, the, the only missing thing is that this, this character here, because it's added dynamically to the scene so that you can, um, you can animate it. And you can see this is, this is, the, this is the Swift UI code. We have uh, um, handling gestures for, for dragging, um, dragging this character. And we can interact with it, although this is solely on the native side. And this is actually a beautiful thing about React Native, because if we don't have something 
designed or, or um, created uh, with JavaScript yet, we can always dive into the, into the native layer uh, and uh, just use the platform. And we're also working on a implementation for um, uh, uh, like a next step for that, so you could control the scene in, uh, uh, from JavaScript and control the gestures for that as well. So sorry about the live demo not working, but uh, <laughs> please, um, um, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's like working with any other app. It's just my Mac is not too powerful to handle that with the screen mirroring. So, so yeah, uh, uh, for, for us, uh, working on uh, React Native for Vision OS, uh, it's, it was a, a really rewarding experience, and we felt like React and React Native are great platforms. Uh, and great tools to build experiences like that, to build new platforms for developers to enter and ship their apps. And I think a true testament to that is that we um, shipped the official version of React Native Vision OS at the same day this device was available for anyone to buy. The same day, day one. Thank you, React. And you can start with this today. You can create your next React Native, uh, next Apple Vision Pro uh, app with React Native using a single command. You can scan this code. It will um, direct you to the, uh, to the project's repository. Of course, it's open source. We're working uh, in the open from the, from the very, very first interactions that, that we've built, and we can't uh, wait for you to, to try it, to file bug reports, uh, and hopefully contribute some documentation and code maybe if you, if you like it. Uh, and uh, I wanted to also mention that actually we don't know if this device is going to be any successful. So uh, we wanted to make sure that our work is elevating the community and improving, uh, improving the tools that allowed us to build that in the first place. So we contributed back whatever we could. We contributed code, new APIs. We made uh, some, web, uh, some, some more web compatible APIs uh, for uh, for core of React Native, we contributed to Mac OS, to React Native for Mac OS, for uh, uh, TV OS. We contributed to Hermes and uh, many other community libraries to make it happen. And it was a very pleasant experience working with this community, making it happen. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I, I know that some of, some of you working with this platform are also, uh, and, and especially people that made it possible, uh, are on the stage. So thank you very much. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, last, last, sorry for taking it uh, slightly longer. Uh, last but not least, I want to thank uh, the two people that are core contributors to this project. Oscar, who is actually shipping the code, uh, and he's working in Callstack's um, R&D, and Matt, who is our technical guidance in the extended reality world. And um, that's it. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to stand here.